Hi there, and welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk. And once again, on behalf of Alice and myself, mm -hmm. and all of the folks that make up our Bible Talk team, yes. we want to greet you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He who is the Word that was made flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. Hallelujah. Because it's about His Word. It's about abiding in His Word so that we will know the truth. Be truly his disciples, know the truth, and that the truth would make us free. Because these are perilous last days mm. indeed. Yes. Well, we're continuing on in our study, and for now, of the Sermon on the Mount. And we're in that part of the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus gave us a model for prayer. And we are pretty much at the end of that prayer now, having looked at all of it over the past few weeks. Mm -hmm. And we're in Matthew chapter 6, verse 13. Correct. Continuing on, where it says, For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And that's what we're going to start looking at today. Uh, but before we do, I'm going to ask Alice once again if you'll just ask God's blessing on our time together. Hallelujah. Father, we just come before you with praise in our hearts and thanksgiving. And we ask you, Lord, to guide and direct us in this word today. We ask you, Lord, to yes, Lord. continue to move in our lives. And we just trust in you, Lord, with all of our hearts, with all of our beings. We thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing. And we thank you especially for your precious word that just changes our hearts and lives. And we just ask you, Lord, that those listening today and forevermore would re hear this word and have their lives changed. Amen. 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 For thine is the kingdom. We're going to talk a little bit about the kingdom of God. Yes. And I'll start off by saying this, and I, I, I pray that I am speaking the truth in love, that for centuries, for centuries and centuries, it seems to me that the church has been building the kingdom of the church. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay? And we can't even build churches. That's not our job. It's not our ministry. I've said this to pastors as mm -hmm. I've had the opportunity to... to teach and share with pastors all over. God never called for a pastor to, to build a church. Mm. Jesus said, I will build my church. Amen. Yes. Okay? The job mm -hmm. of a pastor is to equip the saints for the work of service as they can do the work of service and to feed his sheep. I mean, isn't that what he said to Peter? Yes. Feed my sheep. This is why Solomon went so far off track. And if you look at Ecclesiastes chapter 2, mm -hmm. where he is speaking... And he talks about this great gift of wisdom that God had given him. And he says, why have I been given this wisdom? He forgot why God had gifted him. Because God gave him that gift that he might judge and serve the people of God. And what happened was, if you look at that second chapter of Ecclesiastes, you'll see that he built houses for himself. He built vineyards for himself. He took men. It was all about him. He was building, all of a sudden, he was building his own kingdom. All right? Yes. And things went south. And he hated the work of his, works of his hands. That's why there's so much burnout in ministry today. People have lost sight of why God has gifted them and called them. Okay, I don't want to get too far off. But the, but the thing is, for all that time, for all of these centuries, what has happened is that we have made the kingdom of God. Where's, where's heaven? Where's, where's the kingdom of heaven? Where's heaven? Go down, make a left. <laughs> Seems like it's far away, right? I mean, heaven's so far away. That's right, Alice. As Alice is about to say that Jesus said, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, is within you. Yes. It is as near as God is, and you are the temple of the living God. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So it's that, it is that close. But it seems that, remember that there's a constant conflict between the flesh and the spirit. The flesh on the outside, the spirit on the inside. And what has happened is we have tended 
to externalize the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. We've made that external. It's all about the great massive buildings that we can build, all of the, all of the things on the outside. You know, and Alice and I have spent a lot of time, a fair amount of time in Europe in our ministry. You know, and you travel to the old countries, you travel through Italy, you travel through Germany, you travel through the Czech, Czech Republic, mm -hmm. through Hungary, all these places that were bastions of the old faith. And you see these incredible, massive cathedrals all over that have become little more than tourist attractions and relevant for nothing other than that. That's all they are. Because we put everything on the outside. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is within. It is within us. Mm -hmm. It is about the glory of God. It's about the power of God. For thine is a kingdom, the power and the glory within us. Mm -hmm. Okay? Not, the, not those buildings and not those old rituals and relics that people travel the world and make pilgrimages to see. It's all about religion. That's about religion. And the Sermon on the Mount is about relationship. Okay? So, I, again, I want, to, I want to talk about this so we get a better understanding of what the kingdom of God, what the kingdom of heaven is. Years ago, I heard somebody say that, that kingdoms, nations, are defined by its borders, language, and culture. And that seems like a, quite an accurate statement, right? Yes. Because every kingdom, every country, every nation, every tribe has its own you know, by and large, it has borders that define it. It has its own language, and it has customs, customs. culture. Right. Okay? Now, today, the world that we live in is very chaotic. Oh, my goodness. I mean, as we are filming this here, we're in Manchester, England. And England just left, or voted to leave, in that move that, you know, is Brexit, to leave the, the European Union. Union. Mm -hmm. Okay? And one of the primary reasons for doing that was that they're trying to secure their borders. Right. Because immigration, illegal immigration all over the place is just such a challenge and such a hot topic. Is it not a hot topic as I'm writing or as we're videoing this in the United States of America? Yes. In, a, in an election, a presidential election that's going on, where one of the primary candidates has made it his big issue to stop illegal immigration, that flood of immigrants into the United States by building a wall through the South and by putting restrictions on entry into the country from, from other ways, right? You know, I, I, I've been <clears throat> blessed to have traveled to probably, I think, 55, maybe a little more, 55 countries on five continents. Um, most of them with my sweet patootie Alice over here, my wife Alice. By your side. By her, by, by my side. And we've done that in the pursuit of fulfilling the ministry that God has called me to. In point of fact, this very year, 2016, as we do this, we spent the first few, few months of the year traveling all over the United States and with a joint up into Canada. I would travel in, uh, from all over the state of Florida, where we are based when we're in the States, up to upstate New York, up into Canada down into Virginia, Southwest Virginia, and then over to Dallas, Texas, that, that area, and before coming back to Florida and leaving for Europe. And we came over here to England, and uh, actually, we didn't come to England, we came, no, we went to Barcelona, Barcelona, Spain, we went to well, a few places in Spain, we went to France, we traveled through France, we came over to south part of England, over to London, and then up into the northwest, where we are right now. And into Wales. And then into Wales, North Wales, and then uh, we've just returned, actually, from a trip that we, where we were going to Eastern Europe. We traveled to the Czech Republic. We went to uh, Hungary, and we went to Austria. Mm -hmm. But in the process of doing that, we traveled through France and, and Belgium mm -hmm. and Slovakia, in addition to those countries. Did I say Germany? No. Oh. Also Germany. All the way across Germany. <laughs> um, so... One of the things that I found interesting about traveling in Europe today is there are virtually no borders, and this is one of the big issues. That's right. Because the only way you know that you have traveled from France into Belgium and then into Germany is your, your mobile phone will beep with a message from your carrier telling you that you are now in a different, you know, different area. That's right. So your rates have changed. That's the way you know. They welcome you into the new Yeah, country. because, because <laughs> they have broken down. There, are no, there, there is no border control in most of Europe now. 
However, having said that, it, over in Hungary, mm -hmm. they're enforcing some of the strictest immigration policies that there are, mm -hmm. allowing a very, very limited number with gates and fences across, mm -hmm. only allowing very few people to come in. And then coming back into England as we came, it took us an hour and a half to get through immigration right. because the English immigration is actually situated in Calais, France, because they don't want you to get to England, which is an island, first. Right. So, I, you know, th those restrictions are very, very heavy. So it's, a, it's about the borders. And, and England is building a fence in, in Calais. I mean, Calais has these great immigration or immigrant camps. Mm -hmm. They call them the jungle, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. Um, of immigrants, and they're trying to get into the United Kingdom. Mm. So England has spent millions of pounds to build fences and put patrols around them to keep immigrants from being able to get across the channel and into the United Kingdom. Right. So it's quite an issue for the day, right? Uh, language, well here in the United Kingdom, as in most places, in most places in the world, I think, mm -hmm. nations used to be defined by a language, mm. okay? That's not so. I mean, even in the United States of America, where English is the language of the country, mm -hmm. you'll not pick up a government form that's not also it's written in Spanish. Spanish. Yeah. And here in the United Kingdom, I mean, we spend a lot of time ministering in places in, in, in England where you it's hard to know that you're in England mm. because we are in the midst of such a, um, a Mideastern and African Asian. Uh, population, a Asian population. And that reflects in the language, okay? But all of that said, I, th I still think it's an accurate description. The world is in chaos. Yes, it is. And tumbling deeper and deeper into that chaos all mm -hmm. the time. But the kingdom of God, let's look at it from that perspective. <clears throat> Borders, language, and culture, right. okay? Mm -hmm. There is no place in the world that has the same control for entrance that the kingdom of God does, all right? Think about this. The border control to the kingdom of God is absolute. Although the invitation to enter is to whoever, whomsoever will to enter, mm -hmm. it has to be done lawfully, okay? There is absolutely no exception to that. How do you get into the kingdom of God? Well, in John chapter 10, verse 7, Jesus said, I am, he said to, to them, the disciples are, truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. He's the door. Right. He is the only gateway into the kingdom of God, into the kingdom of heaven. All right? You know, I'm sure you know John 14, 6. One of the most beautiful, and to many people, one of the most offensive verses in the entire Bible, when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. You cannot enter the kingdom except through Jesus Christ. That border control is absolute. And the kingdom of God is a family affair. Mm -hmm. And the entry to it is open only to the children of God. That's right. Think about this. Jesus answered and said to Nicodemus, he said, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of right. God. Right. You have to be a child of God to enter the kingdom of God. John 3, 3. It is the habitation of the Son of God, Jesus, and his brothers and sisters. Think about this. In Matthew 12, I'm going to read from verse 46. While he was still speaking to the crowds, behold, his mother and brothers were standing outside seeking to speak to him. Someone said to him, Behold, your mother and brothers are out standing outside seeking to speak to you. But Jesus answered the one who was telling him and said, Who is my mother and who are my brothers? And stretching out his hand towards his disciples, he said, Behold, my mother and my brothers, for whoever does the will of my Father who is in heaven he is my brother and sister and mother. Do his will. Amen. That's the only way into the Amen. kingdom of God. Let's talk about uh, language, okay? 
Well, out here in the UK, I, I have to tell you that, as a matter of fact, I can remember one day we had, I've been, I did a seminar in the east, uh, over in the western side of Manchester, and afterwards, Alice and I had stopped by in a McDonald's, and we're sitting there, and I heard a voice behind me that I instantly recognized as American. Right. It, is, it is very, very obvious that, you know, when you hear an American accent here, I instantly recognize it. Mm -hmm. And by the same token, you know, when we're in Orlando, Florida, based there, and I hear where there are, which is such a tourist destination, as I'm sure you know, okay, and I hear, so. well, for British people and others, yeah. when I hear a British voice, I can tell that instantly. I can tell from the accent, from the intonation, right. from the vocabulary, all right? I can tell. You know somebody. You know somebody by the way they speak. Yes. I've often hear, I've told people that as I prepare to teach or preach, I say, listen, you, you got to give me some grace. I don't speak English. I only speak American. I'm learning to speak English. And the fact is, I am. I'm, I'm learning the, because of the vocabulary. It's very different. Yes, it's very different. I, it is. It's a very different language. However, if I try, I can use the vocabulary, which is all right. People understand that. But I don't try and sound British, right. quite frankly. Don't, you don't try to do the accent. Oi, mate. <laughs> because if I do that, people it think I'm, it's, it sounds silly. It sounds yeah. foolish, and people will laugh at me. Oh. What happens when you think that, uh, that children of God try and speak like worldly people? Yes. How foolish that looks to God. Mm. Just, just a thought. Mm. The Lord would be the one, if you did that, who would come to tell you right off the bat just how foolish you would be looking. Right. You have to speak the kingdom language. It says in Philippians 3.20, Paul wrote and said, For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, the word that's translated there in the New American Standard, which I'm using, and most other English languages as, as citizenship, is translated in the King James as conversation. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the reason for that is 400 years ago, it was a good thing that people knew that you could tell somebody from the kingdom of God by the way they spoke. Right. Okay? On the night that Jesus was taken, right? His prophecy was fulfilled as Peter sat in the courtyard and denied that he had been with the Lord. And then a second time when he's challenged by, by people, mm -hmm. right? He again denies Jesus. And he denies Jesus twice then until finally, it says in Matthew 26, 73, a little later the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Surely you too are one of them, for even the way you talk gives you away. The way we talk should give us away. People should hear the way we talk and know that we are citizens of the kingdom of God. Why? What's, what's the language of the kingdom of God? Well, you know, Paul wrote in Ephesians, Ephesians 4.29 and said, Let no unwholesome word Proceed from your mouth, but only such a word as is good for edification according to the need of the moment, so that it will great give grace to those who hear. And Peter, this very same Peter who had denied Jesus and now is walking in the power of the Spirit, said, Whoever speaks is to do so as one who is speaking the utterances of God. We don't have freedom of speech. No. We are ambassadors for Jesus Christ. That's what the Word of God says, right? We represent the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And that's 27, 27? How many days? How many? It's 24 hours in a day, right? Right. Seven days in a week. That's, right. that's 24 <laughs> 7. Okay. <laughs> Even Jesus was restricted to that, which is why he said in John chapter 12, he said, For I did not speak on my own initiative. But the Father himself who sent me has given me a commandment as to what to say and what to speak. There is a kingdom language. Yes. It is called speaking the truth in love. Hallelujah. And there is a kingdom culture. 
There's a kingdom. By the way, culture. culture comes from the word, you know, same word as cultivate. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen overnight. You don't plant the seed and pow, zoom. There, there's the, the the flower or the thing you're trying to grow. I am not a grower of things in the ground. Hallelujah. But cultivation is a process. And by the way, that's the oldest profession known to man is gardening. Yes. God created, created Adam, formed him out of the dust, and breathed life into him, and then he placed him in a garden to, to cultivate, cultivate it. Right? And that process is you grow, you shape, you, you make it happen little by little by little. Mm -hmm. And that's how, that's how we get our culture. That's how we get cultivated. It, it doesn't happen instantly, but it's an ongoing process. And the world is trying to cultivate you. It has been cultivating you. From the moment you were born until the moment you were born again, you were cultivated by the world. You were trained up in the ways of the world. Mm -hmm. Today, you know the Word of God says in Jeremiah chapter 10, do not learn the ways of the world, right? That's right. Do not learn the ways of the nation, and do not be terrified by the signs of the heaven, although the nations are terrified by them. Jeremiah 10, verse 2. And this is why, why Paul wrote in Romans, Romans chapter 12, and he said, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Thank you, Lord. We need to be recultivated, all right? We need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. I've shared it so many times, you know, that when Lazarus came forth, called into life by Jesus Christ, called by name, just like you were, just like I was, all right? He came out of that tomb alive, hallelujah. Four days dead, stinking dead, and now he comes out alive. But he came out wearing the grave clothes, wrapped in the clothes of death. And Jesus said, unbind him. We need to be unbound from the things that we learned in the world before we were saved and the things that the world is still trying to teach you. The world's culture, ever since Cain killed Abel, is murder, pornography, mm -hmm. drugs, and the idolatry of greed, the worship of mammon. For the love of money is the root of all sorts of evil, and some, by longing for it, have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. But flee from these things, you man of God, and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, perseverance, and gentleness. 1 Timothy 6, 10, through 10 and 11. Think about that. That is the culture of the kingdom of God. Righteousness, godliness, faith, love, perseverance, and gentleness. The language is speaking the truth in love, bringing the good news of Jesus Christ to a dark and dying world. The culture of the world is sin. The cult, culture of the kingdom is grace. Amazing grace. You need to look at yourself. You know, it says, let a man examine himself. It says, Paul wrote to the Corinthians and said, test yourselves to see if you're in the faith. He could have said, test yourselves to see if you're in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Examine yourselves. Or do you not recognize this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you, unless... You fail the test. 2 Corinthians 13, 5. We are in Christ. Christ is in us. The kingdom of God is within us. Yes. It's not a building out there. It's not a program out there. It is the love of God that's been poured into your heart through His Holy Spirit. It's the word of God that has been written on the tablets of your heart. It's not about big old buildings. It's not about things that have happened here and things that have happened there. It is about things that have happened in here, in your heart. For he has taken the heart of stone and given you a heart of flesh. He has given you his word and his love. You are born again and you have been born again as a citizen of a new kingdom. We need to take this seriously. Because what happens is we become too involved in, in the world and the things of the world. Our ministry is to be here as ambassadors. You know, I, I say this, Alice and I are here in England. We have been, we've lived overseas, we've lived in Central America, we have traveled around Europe, we have traveled in the Mideast, we have traveled in Africa, in East Africa and West Africa. We're here now. They just had this vote for Brexit. I couldn't vote. We are in it. 
but not of We're it. We're in it, but not of it. Yeah. I mean, I'm here. I have to be submissive to the governing authorities. I have to be submissive. I have to. I pay taxes here while I'm here. Oh, yes. Okay. I mean, I, I pay the VAT on everything that we purchase. Mm -hmm. I pay taxes on the car that we buy the, when we to spend time while we're over here. Mm -hmm. I obey the speed limits. I am just as subject. As a matter of fact, I'm going to say that I am more submitted to the speed limits than most of the English people that I know, mm -hmm. because I take this seriously. Obey the speed limits. Be submitted to governing authorities. All right. I, I said that I get in this discussion with English people. I said, you know, it says to pray for those who are in authority. I said, when was the last time you prayed for the queen? Mm. I prayed for the queen. You see, I do all these things. If I were a citizen of England, I'd be a good citizen of England. But I'm not a citizen of England. I am a citizen of the kingdom of God. So while I am here, I will act as an ambassador for the kingdom of God. Yes. I will represent the kingdom of God. Because I, like you, like Alice, like all believers, all who have been born again, we our job is to bring the knowledge of the presence of Christ Jesus into every place, yes. wherever you are. When we get so wrapped up in the world and the, and the things of the world, the politics of the world, mm. you will not fulfill your ministry which is a ministry of reconciliation, a ministry of bringing that good news of Jesus Christ into the darkness of the world. You're playing in the darkness. You examine yourself. You pray about it. You think about it. You ask the Lord about it. Like I said, I'm a, I'm a citizen. I'm not a citizen of the United Kingdom. I wasn't a citizen of uh, the Czech Republic when we were just there. I wasn't a, you know, I wasn't a citizen of Cameroon, West Africa when we were there. I wasn't a citizen of Israel when we're there. But I have to be I have to be that that person who brings that ambassador. I'm an ambassador. That's what you want. You know I said I'm gonna kinda of close on this. Years ago, I think it was probably two thousand nine if I remember right, we had come across and we actually came across with a couple of other folks from from the United States. They joined us on the trip over. And we came in by sea to uh, Southampton, mm -hmm. and we were going from there to London. So we stopped along the way at Windsor Castle, and it just so happened that the flag was flying at Windsor Castle, which indicates that the Queen was in residence. So we went up, and I was just curious. I was wondering, I didn't knock at the door, but I was wondering if the Queen would invite me in for tea. You did stand at the gate. I did stand at the gate. I gave stood her the, at the gate, and we wait. I, I, gave, her the, I gave her the opportunity. Now, if that sounds silly to you, you test this and see if there's not truth behind it. I am an ambassador for a kingdom far, far yes. greater, more powerful, and more glorious than England. I am an ambassador for the kingdom of God. Now, had I been a child of Elizabeth, I could have probably run right through the gate and run up there. Yeah. To, but I'm not. But I am a child of God. Right. So I can go boldly before the throne of grace. Right. And I thank God for that. Because I will go proclaiming along the way that thine is the kingdom, thine is the power, and thine is the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Father, we just thank, thank you Lord. that yes. you have entrusted us with this knowledge. Mm. You have entrusted us with this word. And that you have made us citizens of the lasting kingdom, the everlasting yes. kingdom. We praise you and thank you, Father, yes, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank well, you, Lord. Till next time, be back with us. Join us as we look at what it means to have the power of God in your life. God bless you and goodbye. So I cherish that old rugged cross to my truth.